This video tutorial uh, will look at traditional two-step cost allocation. Uh, for this demonstration, we're going to use exercise 4-3A. Uh, that's on page 227 of our custom textbook. Uh, we have a company that manufactures uh, three different models of a product. Uh, the product names are Vogue, Beauty, and Glamour. Uh, the exercise tells us that we have a cost pool of $576,000 in production overhead costs uh, during the year. And we are going to use a traditional two-step cost allocation method to allocate this uh, overhead to our three different products. And we're going to use two different potential cost drivers. Uh, we're going to use direct labor hours and machine hours. We're going to begin our allocation uh, using direct labor hours. In a two-step process, uh, step one is to allocate the rate uh, based on the cost driver. Here we're using hours, so we'll be looking at a rate per hour. Our total cost pool uh, is the amount of overhead that we want to allocate. In this case, it's $576,000. So let's format our cost. And now we're going to be looking at total labor hours. Our total labor hours are going to be the sum of the labor hours for each of our three products. So we'll sum them up. So we have 12,000 labor hours. We're going to use those labor hours to allocate our cost. So our rate is simply the cost divided by the total labor hours. And that is a rate of $48 per hour. The second st step is to take that rate and apply it to each of our products. So for Vogue, we have 2,000 direct labor hours. We'll multiply it by the rate of $48 per hour. And we'll do the same with our other products. We'll then total our allocations and we know we have got it correctly if our total allocated equals our cost pool. So we can use direct labor hours when there is a good solid connection between an hour's worth of labor and the increase in the labor pool. So what we're looking for is a good fit between our cost driver and our labor pool. So if we have a very labor-intensive process, um, then there'll be a good correlation between the more hours worked and the overhead pool. But say we have a more automated system, a system that uses uh, machinery. In that case, it, the most appropriate cost driver would be tied to the use of the machinery. So here we're going to do an alternative and we're going to use machine hours. So we have the same cost pool of $576,000. We're now going to total up our machine hours. So we have 4,000 total machine hours. And now we'll determine our rate per machine hour. Again, taking the cost and dividing it by the number of hours. And we have a rate of $144. Step two is the same. We're going to take the number of machine hours for each product. For Vogue, it will be $1,200. We'll multiply it by our rate per hour. And we will continue to do that for each of our products.
and again we'll sum them up and we see that the amount that we have allocated equals our total costs so we know that we have fully allocated out the costs and we can now compare the two under machine hours Vogue would be allocated one hundred and seventy two thousand eight hundred dollars uh, whereas under the direct la uh, labor costs, uh, it, it's only being allocated 96000 So if this was a labor-intensive process and we allocated using machine hours, we would over-allocate costs to Vogue. That is, Vogue would be charged for uh, overhead uh, greater than their actual use. If we were using direct labor hours and we were in a more highly automated process, uh, Vogue would be undercharged. They would be charged 96000 when when the true allocation should be closer to those that were received by the other two products, Beauty and Glamour. So it's very important we pick a driver that closely matches the business process that we're looking at, in this case, manufacturing. If it's a labor-intensive operation, then we should use a cost driver that is based on labor. If it's a highly automated environment, we're going to want to use something that is tied to the operation of the machinery. Uh, we could also use cost drivers that are associated with the amount of material that a particular product uses. So all of this is really driven by the business process uh, that we have. And that's our two-step cost allocation method. Step one is to take our cost pool, divide it by the total activity for the cost driver to give us a rate per hour. Step two is to take the activity uh, for the cost driver by our product or department, multiply it by our rate. Again, we do it all the way through and at the end we sum them up to make sure that the total that we have allocated equals our cost pool.